Nope. Got it. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Good morning and welcome to our worship service. I know the uh, furnace went out this morning and so you go upstairs and freeze to death or kind of be together in, in a warm place. And so we decided just to meet here. I wasn't sure who was going to be here. And Jim, am I a little imitating right in front of you? <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> it's imitating. So anyway. But again, we're God's good and we're all warm and we're glad we're here to worship. If some people do come, we can kind of see, see them in the back back there. But Again, we're, and if you feel like you're getting, people are too close, you want to get up and move around, you're welcome to do that as well. So, uh, for our announcements this morning, um, make sure you sign up to be a lay reader for church or hostess for fellowship next month. And we are also updating our um, usher list, so if anyone wants to be added, um, just let me or Maggie know and we'll get that put together. I know some, with some of the kids kind of moving on. Um, if you just want to, or if you want to switch with somebody, this is a good time uh, to let us know. And then this Friday is the men's retreat at the uh, New Hope Camp, and there's a brochure on that if you are interested in that. And I, I believe also, um, if you want to be on the prayer chain or the church prayer chain or information change, uh, let make your eye know, and there's a place you can just fill that in there, and you're either a text your or your um, email and we'll add you to our list to that so okay all right are there any other announcements this morning we need to lift up if you remember the good saying in the bible those last will be first and those first will be last so those are our last will probably be sitting up here and those that were first uh got the good seats in the back so <laughs> anyway and someone did tell me i didn't have to Scream louder because you were in a smaller area, and I'm just used to hollering anyway. But um, this does remind me when I was at Trip and Mount Vernon, um, both times we were having issues with paying our bills, and so we kind of for January we met down in the basement, and so it was kind of nice. And the one thing I realized when you're all together, you sing better. And in Trip and Mount Vernon, you had about 10 to 15, 20 people in all. You don't hear you guys sing as well, but as you come together as a group, you can hear each other sing. So I'm interested to see how you guys sing uh, today. So, all right. Pastor? Yes. Have kid. Everybody be thinking about camps for this summer. Okay. Um, I think we have enough Sunday school money that between the ladies and the Sunday school money that the kids' way should all be paid. Mm -hmm. So encourage... Um, your children to go to camps at New Hope. I, you know, I, Lake Pond, or any Lake camp, Pond, or any camp you guys plan on going to, whatever. Have enough money to yes. pay for it. So, if you see the information, get your kids signed up. Right. Get, get the bill to Tess. I yes, believe. Tess is here. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, if you could have any questions on that, visit with me. But or with Tess, she'll be willing to to let you, you know, help you out. Yeah, we have money to help send you guys to camp and. So, yeah, we thank really you. We really benefited for our Sunday school class with the singing and the yes. music. And, and yes. these kids came back with some really great songs. And mm -hmm. Yep, good. That's great. Thank you, Janice. All right, any other announcements? Okay. Good. Will you please join me in our call to worship? It's on the screen or in your bulletin if you can see the screen, but I'll just have you uh, remain seated for the call to worship. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who are near. For through him all of us have access in one spirit to the Father. Okay, and our first hymn is uh, this little light of mine. We'll do that first. and I'll just have you remain seated. That way everyone can see the screen. Or we do have hymn notes, if you want hymn notes. A little bit louder. Can you turn? Yeah, perfect. Mm. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. 
let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Blow through the night, I'm going to let it shine. Blow through the night, I'm going to let it shine. All through the night, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And then we'll do uh, 2150, or Lord be glorified. If you need a hymn, faith, we do have some. you guys need anything back there? Okay. Okay. Did I give you the wrong number? Okay. <laughs> In our lives, Lord, be glorified, be in our lives, Lord, be glorified today. In our homes, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In our Lord be with you, and, also with you. and let us pray. O oh God, who commanded the apostles to go into the world and to preach the gospel of, to every living creature, let your name be great among the nations from rising up from the sun to its going down, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes to us from the book of Corinthians, chapter 1. Paul called to be apostle of Christ Jesus. This is not, okay. Uh, by the will of God to our, our brother Sosilus, and to the church of God in Corinthians, to those sacrificed in Christ Jesus, and called to be holy, together with all of those everywhere who call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. 
I always give thanks, or I always thank God for you because of his grace given to you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, and in all your speaking and in all of your knowledge, because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore, you do not have, do not lack any spiritual gifts, as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. For he will keep you strong to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. For God has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. Here ends our first reading. And our act of praise this morning comes from Psalm 40. Should be on page 774 in your back of your hymnal, 774. <clears throat> I wait patiently for the Lord who inclined to me and heard my cry. The Lord drew me up from the desolate pit, out of the miry bog, set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. For the Lord has put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. And you will see and be in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed are those who make the Lord their trust who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. O Lord, my God, you have multiplied your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell, and tell of them that they would be more than can be numbered? Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering, you have no required. And I said, Lo, I come, in the roll of a book that it is written on me. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Lo, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hid your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and faithfulness from the greater congregation. O Lord, do not withhold, withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and faithfulness ever preserve me. In our hymn is number 396, O Jesus, I have promised. Now you remain seated again. Yeah. 
seem pretty good as a group together that's good so i'd like to share with you our scripture reading for today for my message it comes from uh first john and this is right after jesus was baptized and later on um john the baptist is with his disciples and he is telling them that the man that just walked by was jesus so his followers follow jesus and then jesus um turns around and, and asks him, what do you want? And this is the story. Start with verse uh, 26, or 29. It says, The very next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpasses me, because he was before me. For I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. And then John gave his testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me that the man of whom you see the spirit come down and remain is he who is will baptize with the holy spirit i have seen i have testified that this is the son of god now the next day john was there again with two of his disciples and he saw jesus passing by and and he said look the lamb of god and when the two disciples heard him say this, they, were, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying and spent that day with him, for it was about the tenth hour. Now Andrew, who was Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. And the first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We found the Messiah, that is, is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Clepus, Clepus. Cleopas, which translated, which means Peter. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Let's pray. Now may Jesus Christ, the King of glory, help us to make the right uses of all the merits that God sends and to offer him the true incense of our hearts. In his name we pray. Amen. My sermon title is, 
entitled Becoming a Follower of Jesus, and I'd like to just ask you a few questions and just think about these questions for a moment. When did you and I decide it to follow Jesus? When did you and I decide to follow Jesus? Think about that for a moment. And what was it that made you make that decision to be a follower of Jesus? And how can we convince others of who Jesus Christ is? Now these are all very important questions. But the matter of being a Christian is also the issue of where and when and how we are Christians. An underlying question concerning our discipleship is, who helped bring us to Jesus Christ? Now John's Gospel is really interested in this question. Now first of all, the first point I wanted to make is that someone pointed us to Christ. Because if someone didn't, we wouldn't be where we're at today. We wouldn't be worshiping. But someone pointed us to Christ somehow. Now the next day, after the day after some of the religious leaders concerned John the Baptist, John runs into the one that he says, after his pro-announcement, that he was so powerful that he could not untie his sandals. And then John says this. He says, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now the biblical witness is that we are founded by God. And this occurs with the help you see of others. John tells his disciples, and he witnesses to them, and he points them, you see, to Jesus' direction. And you see, we need to think from time to time, who, and recall, who was it that spoke to us about Christ? And in doing so, not pointing to themselves or their experience, but to Christ, so that we might meet and experience Christ for ourselves. So who was it that brought you to Christ? Could have been a parent, grandparent, a neighbor, a spouse, a friend? And the second point is Christ puts our lives into perspectives. Now John's disciples must have had their neck, neck stretched out, it's on their tiptoes when they seen this man, Jesus, walking by. Now John is now speaking just to his disciples. He's not speaking to the religious leaders. And as Jesus passed by, John huddles his group of followers who maybe be stunned when they seen this man, Jesus, walking by. And again, as John puts it, there is the Lamb of God. Now, whether or not the disciples really understood the, the meaning of John's pro announcement is not clear. But what is clear is that John knew Jesus would take a place in the temporal, temple sacrifices. For Jesus, for John would Jesus for John would be the one and only sacrifice that would completely fulfill salvation through all generations. And those who have come before and those who would follow after. So the third point I'd like to make is that we need to be confronted by Christ. But a question I'd like to ask you, do you think the church makes it too easy to follow Jesus Christ? Do you think the church makes it just too easy? 
this passage makes it, us think about the ways and the means by which we invite people to Jesus Christ. Now, the first disciple, Andrew, and then later on his brother, Peter, are inspired by the rabbi. And John, to leave and become a disciple, they left John to become disciples, you see, of Jesus. And as they follow Jesus, Jesus is noticing that he is being followed. And Jesus turns around and he asks them, what do you want? And really, this question should be answered by anyone that's going to be a follower of Jesus. If Jesus asks, what do you want? So my question is, why are you following Christ today? Now, like the disciples' answer later on, it's interesting. They said, hey, Jesus, where do you live? And Jesus made them focus on really why they are following him. Are they following Jesus because John told them to follow? Or were they following Jesus because they were being a little curious about this guy? <coughs> Their interest is where Jesus lives is sufficient. And Jesus invites them to discover for themselves where he does take up residence. It's not in a palace. It's not in someone's house. <coughs> it's not in the, in the synagogue. But this Christ comes sets up residence in the human heart and soul. And becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ is no simplistical uh, matter. <coughs> and we who follow Christ should not take it lightly our calls as we invite others to Jesus Christ. So in conclusion, I'd like to share with you, if people really want to know what God is like, they need to look at Jesus. And if people want to know what Jesus is like, they should be able to look at his followers, which is us. So my question for you, can people see Christ in you. Let us pray. Strengthen us, O oh God, to heed the calling that you have placed in our lives. Encourage us to trust the voices and instructions that make us who we are and as disciples of your Son. <coughs> And let your unending love and consistent faithfulness shine through us, that we may truly be your people on this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And our hymn of response is in the, our faith we sing. It's kind of a, a new hymn, but I noticed it's pretty fast on the CD. So uh, does anyone need a faith? we sing back there? Do you guys need any back there? We have extras up here. Okay, so let's do the summons 2130. I'll have you remain seated. But it's pretty fast, so... Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't go and never be the same? Will you let my love go shone? May you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grow in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for crew and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare? Should your life attract or skim? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? 
Will you kiss the leopard clean and do such as this is seen? And admit to what I mean in you and you in me. Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the left faith alone to reshape the world around? Do my sign and touch and sound in you and you in me. Let your summons echo true in you, but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I go, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I move and live and grow in you and you in me. Okay. We're going to omit our creed and go to our prayer. To our prayer. Are there any uh, joys, concerns you'd like to lift up uh, this morning? If you notice, Doris's name is in here. We're praying for her. She's lost her brother. What a couple was a week ago or a couple weeks ago, Maggie? You remember when Maggie? Anyways, that's why she's on our prayer list. Nothing's bad with her, but just why her name is... We're praying her brother passed away. and So, um, also, Joy, uh, my beautiful bride's birthday is coming up, so if we'd like to send her a greeting, she would love to hear from you. So, she's not here, so I can say my lovely bride. So, all right. Okay, any other joys or concerns? Okay. All right. Kind of nice to have you guys a little bit closer together. I can hear you guys <laughs> sing, so it's kind of nice. So, all right, let us go to God in prayer then. Okay. Oh, fire of redemption, send us as you have sent your servant to be the light to the world. Oh, voice who calls the prophets, who told Isaiah to proclaim of the end of the exile. Call us and give us a sustaining word for those who are lost. O Lamb of God, visit us with your mercy. Comfort those who are grieving. Heal those who are ill. Fill those who hunger. Humble the ignorant. Bless the just. O Lamb of God, visit us with your peace. O Dove, who hovered above Jesus and announcing who he really was at his baptism, speaking to us, speaking to us of our true name, children of the Most High, and we praise your name with our voices and with our lives. As we are saints and co-heirs with you in this bountiful future of the heavenly realm. And gracious God, we are just grateful that we can come here this morning out of the bitter cold to warm our hearts. And we know that when we have you in our hearts, we shine. And Lord, help us share that light with others, especially in a world that seems so very dark. And Lord, we also lift up those on our prayer and concern list this week. We like to lift up Doris Shenhall's family as a loss of her brother. Again, be with Doris and the family during this time of grieving. And Lord, there's others that are grieving the loss of a loved one, and knowing you are there with them. You let that warmth shine upon him. And also lift up Neil Raceby and Asu's great nephew, Alice Bedford, and Harriet Adele, Bertha Crylo, Don Lucas, George Schroeder, and all others on our hearts and our minds, O oh God.
And Lord, yes, we lift up our, our bishop and our district superintendents and our Dakota Conference prayer list and lift up the churches and the leadership of these churches that are in North Dakota. Lansford, Robertson, and Sterling. Then here in South Dakota, we lift up the Mission United Methodist Church. And Lord, be with the Good Samaritans that are out there helping people, uh, whether it's scooping snow or getting maybe some pills, medicine for them, or, or maybe getting their mail or whatever it is, scooping snow, food, groceries, whatever it is. We're so grateful that uh, people are out there helping others. That's what you called us to do, Lord. And Lord, we lift all this up to you as we now join together in the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And let us now confess our sins to God and to one another. Please join me in our prayer confession on the screen or in your bulletin. And let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we thank you that you judge us not by the perfection of our actions, but by our readiness to live boldly by faith. Help us as individuals and as a congregation to trust you and follow where you lead, that in Christ your name may be glorified in all the earth. Amen. And let's continue time of silent prayer as, as we make our own confession to God. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And may these words be our words of assurance and pardon for us. Amen. Uh, today in the United Methodist Church, our mission often for this month is Human Relations Sunday. So if you'd like to give for that, you're welcome to, to give for that. Again, you want to do, you bring that next Sunday if you didn't bring money for that. But uh, but today is our Human Relations Sunday, and now we'll invite the usher, we'll invite Mel, I guess, and he'll grab our tithes and offerings. Okay. I have you, Sam, please, for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Amen. 
Wondrous God, we delight in your abundant gifts and receive your bounty with thanks. As we share a portion of your abundance, transformed our offerings, that they may be your promise of hope to a world of need. Transform our lives that we may walk in your ways and be the light of the world. Amen. And we got done a little bit earlier, so that's kind of nice that we can all get together and and so, but receive our benediction fellowship after church. So we just guys can just get out. Uh, receive now our benediction. Just get out. Just get out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm not used to having you guys this close to me, so I feel like I'm getting suffocated up here. But just get out. <laughs> receive now our blessing. We have been strengthened by Christ and the blessed by God. That every gift, every talent, everything that we need is here in the body of Christ. For God has called you, and we have listened. We are, we go forth now in response to God's call. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. And we'll sing our benediction song, and then you may be dismissed. <laughs> Be there watching from.